In today's video, I'm going to show you how to paint a really simple snowy forest scene. Welcome back to my channel. On this channel, we do all things watercolour as well as drawing tutorials, even a little bit of mixed media and some motivational stuff too. Please do consider subscribing. It's completely free. Now, scenes with lots of trees in forest scenes can be really kind of overwhelming. You can look at them and think, oh, I just don't even know where to start. So today I'm going to help you with that. We've got snow on these tree trunks as well. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to use candle wax. It's really, really easy. Yes, just basic household candle wax. And a few other easy techniques are going to get this forest scene painted in no time. This painting is actually day five, the last day of our winter landscape challenge. Don't worry if you don't know anything about that and you're not interested in that. You can just treat this as an ordinary tutorial. But if you would like to take part and you can take part at any time that you like, basically it's five winter scenes in five days and you get a free downloadable PDF with each. The videos are freely available here on YouTube in their own playlist, but you can uh, grab the PDFs if you follow the instructions in the description video. There are also some other things in there that will help you with this painting. And the PDF will give you the photograph and all of the materials I'm using, along with some swaps if you don't have the same stuff as me. So let's point the camera downwards and get started. Here's our photograph. Looks complex, right? But we're going to break it down and keep it quite simple. So I want you to think about the trees and I want you to sort of put them into three categories. So we've got these big trees that are quite prominent and quite far forwards. There's probably about five of those. And those are the ones that we're going to concentrate or getting really bright and clear because they're up close. Then there are some trees like these ones here that are slimmer, a little further back, and they have a small amount of snow on. And then you have the trees. The third type of tree are these very, very slender ones ones that are quite faint because they are being affected by aerial perspective. So that faintness is pushing them back. So that's your third type of tree. So I don't want you to worry at this point about those third trees. I want you to concentrate on drawing the first type of trees, these large ones here at the front and these slimmer ones that are further back. You don't have to draw any of the little branches or anything like that. I just want you to draw the shape of them. So let's get started. We also need to think about where the line of snow is here. That's a good place to start as well. Now, if you look closely at this uh, photograph, there's a tiny, tiny fence here. Don't even worry about that. It's too small to think about. It's certainly made of iron and very, very tiny. So we're not going to bother doing that at all. I mean, you know, up to you, put it in if you wish to, but I don't think it adds anything to the scene. So we'll start off by drawing this line, this rough line across here, just to show us roughly where the snow sits. Keep it quite ragged. And it's about, it's certainly less than a quarter. It's about a fifth of the way up. So I'm just going to start by putting some kind of rough guideline in here. It'll just give me something to work from. What I'm going to start with then are the biggest trees working backwards. So this tree here is different to all the rest in that it disappears off the front of the paper. And the next biggest one is this one here, which starts further in. Now, these are fairly straight trees, but they will all narrow as they go up. You see they have this curve at the base. That's quite important to put in. And then they do have one or two sort of bumps in them where branches and things are going to come off later or just where they grew in the first place. So I'm going to start off of the paper with this one here, putting this in, coming up here like this, do it quite large. Now I'm drawing straight through that first line that I did of the snow. We can erase that later on. Now, as I always say, you are not looking to make a tree that would be recognized by its own mother. We just want realistic looking trees, so don't overthink this. I'm going to come in now and start drawing this one up here, which has got more of a bend in it. And remember as well to get that little turn out at the base. It's going to help you make it look rooted. Remember trees as they grow up always get narrower. There may be a slight bump somewhere like this, where perhaps there was a branch attached before but they don't generally go out wider and then in again, unless you're looking at the very, very stump where all of the big branches come out. So with these trees, I want you to make sure that they get very slightly narrower as they go up. I'm going to get on and draw in these main types of tree, the big trees and the medium sized trees. This is what you should have after you've drawn your main trees. So I'll just move it up so you can see the base and the top here. 
what we're going to do now is just erase any lines that have gone through the trees there they're very faint but just take those out of those main trees and I'm just going to because it's getting a bit sketchy I'm just going to make this line of snow a little bit stronger so I can see it make sure that it goes between the trees here not over the top after you've done this I want you to pick four or five main trees, the ones that you want to really stand out and be at the front. So obviously the larger ones, if it helps you to remember which ones they are, what you can do is place a little cross at the side of your paper here. I mean, I stretch my paper, so I've got this border to work on. You may not have that. You could put a little dot or something just at the edge. And we're going to mark the trees that we want to stand out the most. Next, we're going to choose our colors. We're going to use just three colors for this painting. So I've got this color here. It's actually a color I designed myself. It's called Winter Bark. You can see it's a cold, dark brown. Similar colors to this might include sepia, or honestly, you can get any warm brown and put something like some ultramarine in or some cobalt blue, and it will cool it down and darken it. For my blue, because it's so versatile, I'm going to use a little bit of this phthalo blue. And I can also mix it here if I want to create some cooler bluish gray shades. Lastly, another slightly unusual color, but one easy to mix yourself is this Winsor & Newton red shade orange. So this is a very sort of coral type color. You can easily mix a color like this either by getting a yellow and mixing some pink in, or if you've got an ordinary orange, just warm it up with a little bit of pink something like permanent rose or quinacridone pink, and you'll get this warm pinky orange shade. We'll be able to combine it with the other colors to get a really interesting color palette. Now, to be clear, this isn't the only palette that you could use for this. You could add yellow in if you wanted to. You could use a warm brown and perhaps a warmer blue to cool it down with. Any simple palette will work well with this painting. Just make sure that you've definitely got a brown and a blue. Now, first up, I want you to dilute your blue with lots of water to make a big puddle of quite light colored blue paint. If you're using a blue like ultramarine, remember it's going to settle and granulate. So as you apply that, you'll need to stir. I'm using this color, this phthalo blue, because it's a much more transparent color. What we're going to do now is put it in our background. So remember I asked you to mark the trees that you want to stay at the front. We're going to paint in between those four or five trees that you've marked, but we're going to paint over the top of the other trees. So let's start here, for example. This tree I've marked, this one I haven't. So I'm going to take this blue. I'm going to do almost a flat wash. So I'm going to take this all the way down. You see the paint is quite wet and I'm spreading it so that it doesn't have any puddles and I'm just gonna take it down and avoid those main trees that I want to keep with some pure white on. Don't worry if you make you know, a slight inaccuracy like this, the brown will cover it up later on. I just want the opportunity of there being some white snow on those trees. So again, we're reserving that tree. This one we're not, so we're gonna go across this. Stop your paint as you come down to the line of snow that we drew horizontally across the paper. As always at this point, can I ask you just to do me a favor and click the like button, click that thumbs up for me. It helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Videos like this take many, many hours to create. And most of all, with this winter landscape challenge, I'd love you to share these videos as well. Share them with a friend or share them in an online group with anyone you think may find them useful. Now let's get back to today's tutorial. Now in order that we don't see too much of a delineation there later on, I'm just going to sweep some clean water on this part here just to soften that line where it meets that horizontal line. Now over here we've got a bright sun so we're going to put some clean water on this part so that I don't get too much blue on there. You might be wondering why I'm putting so much blue in the background when in fact the sky here is white. That's because photographs are nearly always washed out in the winter. Landscapes in general, if the sky is quite pale, they tend to wash out and the camera sees them as white. They're not usually white in real life. So I think I'm going to place my sun area around here. We can work on it more later on. At the moment, I'm just going to put some clean water there and then I'll come down until I hit that water like so and up the other side. So we get a bit of brightness through the trees here. 
at this stage this is how your painting should look with just some of those big trees picked out in white now i've got one or two marks coming over here you might be asking what they are i'm asking myself the same thing it's generally something has happened to my paper i've been doing multiple tutorials this week so i've been sort of turning things over and working on the back so it's possible that something here got on my paper you can get away with anything in a forest scene. We're not going to worry about it even slightly. The paint has still gone on there. It's just gone a little bit lighter. So that's going to be fine. We're going to use some candle wax next, but we're going to go on top of both the white areas and these blue areas. So this needs to be bone dry. By the magic of editing, my paper is now bone dry. And um, I'm going to take just a household candle like this one. I've just got an old bit here that's been in my art box for some time. We're going to do it. So we're going to use this as a resist. So I want you to try it out first. Have a practice. So where you rub it on the paper, it will resist your paint. Not only that, but it's transparent. So it will also reserve an underneath colour. So we're going to put this candle kind of wax on the trees to reserve the snow. And you can see that on the trees that are white, we'll reserve white snow. Whereas on the trees in the background, we're going to reserve light blue snow. Now there is a blue aura to all of the snow in this picture. The only bits that are really pure white are these little bits down here. But I just wanted these ones at the front to be white because I just did. And I'm using a color palette that's much cooler than the one in the picture here. You could warm it up and go much more towards lilac. It's just that I've done so many lilac pictures in this challenge so far. I wanted to go really icy with this one. But that peachy color will warm it up a little bit too. So the first thing you need to do is apply your candle wax. Now, I've got some masking tape here. I've been sticking this on my jumper here and that's so that it picks up some lint you can rub it with your hands you want to basically get some of the sticky off of it because we don't want it tearing our paper and then the easiest way to do it is to sort of you know tear it into small strips you don't have to use this but anywhere that you think that you might go off the edge while you're rubbing the uh the tree you can choose to use you know you can use if you want to the uh the straight edge like this if you've got a tree where it's a little bit bumpy because snow does sit out from the edge of the tree you may want to just tear that paper because you'll get a little bit of a more realistic look you can almost sort of pleat it and work it around because once you put this stuff on your paper you won't get it off so i'm just going to use this anywhere that i need to just have a little bit of reassurance that i'm not going to take my snow over onto there now you can't really see where you're placing it I want you mostly to make fairly horizontal marks. Don't forget to go slightly rounded sometimes in order to give a bit of an idea of the roundness of the tree trunk. There are also areas here where it's going up the bark. So you might want to do some sort of straighter lines towards the base of one or two of these trees. And I'm just going to work across. Like I said, you can't entirely see where you're putting all of this. Put plenty on those foreground ones. That's quite the fun of it. I'm also going to make some little marks on these ones in the background too so that we can reserve the blue it'll still look like snow by the time we finish this picture so now i want you to go across all of your trees and place some snow on them keep referring back to what you can see on the photograph and anywhere that you're worried about going off the edge you can place some tape along now although i said you can't see where you're putting the candle wax if you hold it up into the light you should get some idea of just if you've got enough of it on there that it's going to show up later on. We're going to go back into the background again and this time we're going to paint between all of the trees that we've drawn but we're only going to paint the lower half and we're going to go in with this nice orangey colour. If you've got a yellow and you go on top of blue you will end up with green. You might want to mute that down a little bit or if you've got a yellow you can warm it up with some pink. So what I want you to do is, although we're only painting the lower part, we don't want a drying line here. So we're going to start each section. We're going to start at the top with clean water and add the paint as we come down. So let's start in this corner section. So I'm starting. All I'm doing is painting with clean water and avoiding the first tree that I've drawn. Coming down like this. Then I'm going to start adding just the tiniest bit of orange in here just so we get a bit more warmth in the background. You can come a little stronger as you come down. And you're just gonna end neatly at your drawn pencil horizon line there. You're gonna repeat that all the way across. 
You can vary light and dark, but remember it's supposed to go behind things. So don't want to have one that's super dark and one that's super light. So I'm going to go all the way across. I'll just show you the one I'm going to do where the sun is. So let's do this one. And I'm going to bring my clean water. So remember, you're avoiding all of the trees that you've drawn this time, including the ones that got painted blue. So we're coming down like this. So I've got my clean water across that sun area there. I'll do the bottom half as usual. And then what I'm going to do next is take a little bit stronger paint that's quite drippy and wet. And I'm just going to go around the edge of that white area like so. You can go as dramatic as you want with this. All the rest I'm going to paint exactly as I showed you. Remember, this time you are also avoiding the trees that you painted blue. See how quickly it's coming along. So you can see I've varied the height here. I've also gone a little more orange around the sides of the uh, adjacent areas to the sun as well. We're keeping it all very winter and very watery. Now we're going to let this dry. I am really pleased with how this has dried overnight. So if it's got a little lighter, it's because it's morning here now. In order to make the winter landscape challenge even more effective, I decided to actually film it in the winter. It starts getting dark about 2.30 in the afternoon here and by four, there's no light at all. But I am really pleased with this effect. Now we're gonna finish this painting in just four simple stages. We're gonna start doing the trees. We're gonna go with the ones at the back first and work forwards. And then we're going to do the shadows in the foreground. Simple as that and we're done. I want you to get your colour mixing right here. So I've been mixing some colour here. What I did was I started with water and then because I need a lot of colour, I then put some phthalo in, touch of brown and then I swatched it. And this is for the trees at the back. Now it was too grey so I warmed it up by putting some more orange in it. So if we do a comparison, I've now got this colour here. That's just what I want for these background trees. And those are the ones we're going to put in next on dry paper. Now I mixed with a big brush like this just so that I could get a lot of paint up. And now I'm going to paint with this smaller brush. It's not too small though. And I'm going to start always over on the left hand side. And that is because I'm right handed, but also because I don't want to just dot around. I want to work one side to the other. And what that will do is that will mean this side starts to dry. So when I come back to paint the larger trees, hopefully this side will already be dry. If it's not, I can give it a little bit longer. And all you're going to do is just freehand, I want to just take some of these little trees in behind. Always paint from the bottom up and out. Just allow them to naturally go off the paper. You can also get the effect of some branches and leaves and twigs. Occasionally you want to take them through and out behind something. Try not to paint over the larger trees. Keep looking back at what's going on in your picture. I want you to put these right the way across behind both the white and the blue trees that we've reserved and placed some wax on. Now I've almost finished this area so I'll give you a few more hints. Now it might look like I've varied how light and dark this mix is but I really didn't at all. The only thing is that the more paint you've got on your brush the darker it will dry. So if I want some sort of you know darker leaves here I can just put them on with much more paint and I'll get darker areas. If the brush is a bit more sparse, then I'll get lighter areas. As I came to this area where the sun is, I put some clean water here so that the uh, trees wouldn't go through that. So we get that nice sort of glowing winter sun. Notice that in places I went below this line here, just so that we get the impression that although they're at the back, you know, they're not all sitting on a straight edge. So I brought one or two of them down below that line. And I'm just working on this as much as I want. Don't be afraid to put quite a lot in. So you want your forest to look, you know, well populated, lots of twigs and leaves. But you also want enough of that winter sky showing through. Next, we're going to do the middle sized trees, the ones that are currently blue. And I've mixed what I did was I tipped out about half of that paint and I added other paint in a bit of brown, a bit of blue, mostly orange. And I got this color here. Now, if you're probably using a warmer brown than me, you may not need to add any orange at all. So just have a mix. And when you swatch, make sure you allow it to dry because it can change quite a bit. So what I'm going for here is a mid tone. And then on the big white trees, we're going to go very dark indeed, just in with that neat dark brown. 
Now this is where we should see the magic appear and we'll start to get some of that wax that we put on earlier appearing. So again, I'm going to start over here on the left hand side. Try not to have sort of a straight line at the base of your tree. You can put a little clean water on or you can just make sort of a bumpy shape because there would be snow in front of it. Now as I paint up, you can see where that wax has resisted and we get those shadowy snowy areas start appearing. I'm going to work across with this colour, painting all of the blue trees. Now, can you spot the deliberate mistake right here? Actually, it wasn't deliberate at all. I started painting on the white tree because I got carried away. We all do it, don't we? There's no need to panic about things like that. All I did was blot, left it alone. These trees are going to be so dark, that's just going to cover up. In fact, I sometimes blot trees anyway, just to get a bit of textured bark on them, which I might do on these dark trees if I feel they need it. If I don't, I won't do that. What I'm going to do on these trees now, these white trees that are left, is I'm going to go in with just this paint on its own. This is my winter bark colour. If you're wondering why it's in a little pot, it's probably a manufacturer's sample. I think this one is in my shadow set of colours by Jackmans. If you don't have this, as I said, sepia is a good alternative. You can just get any dark brown and make it a little cooler by the addition of some ultramarine or cobalt. Now you do have to consider that if your tree is next to another tree, obviously if that one's damp, this one's going to run in. It's not as big a problem as it would be somewhere that you need to be completely clean like a sky because it's all sorts of stuff going on with tree bark. But I would just wait until those trees are mostly dry. Luckily, this one here isn't touching anything. So I'm going to go straight in with this paint. So you could go straight in with pan paint or you could go straight in with fairly neat tube paint. And we're just going to start at the bottom here and come up. And these were the ones that I put the most candle wax on and we can see it there starting to appear. All I'm going to do is just literally paint these trees with this dark brown color. As I said, if they start to look, you know, if you haven't got much white showing up on them, they're just looking really flat and boring. You can just get some tissue and just, you know, give them a little bit of texture like that. But remember, they need to stay reasonably dark. We're going to work on the snow at the front now. You should make sure your trees are completely dry. Mine are not quite, but I will be waiting until they are dry before I paint over that side. What I want you to do now is just make another line with your pencil because we've got this area at the back that in the photograph is kind of behind the fence and I want to get that a little muddier than the foreground. We need to make sure that it kind of sinks back. So make yourself some kind of ragged line here. I've got some watered down phthalo blue here and what I'll be doing in this area here and you can remove any pencil from that top line. Be careful obviously doing that. It can smudge and I'm going to put the blue in but periodically I'm just going to drop either a little bit of the brown that I mixed or some of this orange just you know palette mud basically and just drop this in occasionally just to knock that blue back a bit. So you're gonna paint across that back little area, but just muddy it up a tiny bit to knock it back. So the very last thing is to put these strong shadows and leave some white areas in the front. Now it's really important at this stage that everything's clean, that your water's clean, that your mix is clean. So I have mixed here some phthalo blue. There's a tiny bit of orange in it just to warm it up. If I take that too far, it's going to go gray. So what I'm going to do now is take a big brush and be really brave and just apply this where I see it and then leave it alone. And if there are any areas of pencil, you can just quickly lift those out. Don't worry about them too much in this painting. And what we're going to do is we're going to go in. It's quite important to get an idea of sort of slightly horizontal marks in places. You should default to that rather than going upwards because always in landscapes you want to get that idea that everything is laying flat. Smaller marks in the distance and I'm just going to work my way across. Make sure you leave wide areas and don't fiddle with it. Just painting what you see. So I hope you enjoyed the winter landscape challenge. It's certainly been a challenge for me getting all these videos up in one week, I can tell you. I would love to tell you that uh, everything was done in advance and I just posted them on the day, but 
Unfortunately not, I'm a busy person and uh, some of it was last minute, but we got it done and we got there. Remember, there's no time limit on this challenge. Everything is available for good. I'll leave it all up on my course site. So you can grab those PDFs at any time you would like to. Don't forget to use the hashtag. Don't forget to show me what you've done. And I'd love to know in the comments how you got on if you did all of them. Be great to see a montage of your paintings. And do let me know as well if you'd like any other challenges, or any other ideas for challenges. I've got a few. We'll consider doing those ones in the future after I've recovered from this one. Meantime, here are some videos that YouTube thinks that you might like to watch.